Okay, everybody out here in Progress of Portland, which is Manchester, Hookson, and Auburn so far. We hope to add Goffstown shortly. I didn't tell you that, Lou. We are oh. we are trying to get this. there. We yeah, do we'll have a, people want us to be in Goffstown, and we're we're working on that. Mike Farley's supposed to be working on it. And uh, because this is the first Wednesday of this month of October, and by God, Lou, for the first time since March, I walked into the studio uh, down the Elm Street without any light in the sky. It was dark. Dark. Yeah. But in any event, here we are, and it's because it's the first Wednesday of the month, as has been the case for quite a while now. I am very privileged to have with me as my co-host, not Mike Farley, who will be here next week, but Senator Lou D'Alessandro, a fine public servant uh, serving the citizens of Manchester. And now that he's a senator, also the citizens of Gosstown and his uh, role as a state senator for, I have to keep asking, how many terms? I've been in the Senate for 20 years, 10 terms. 20 years, 20 yeah. years, my gosh. And Danny was a little boy when oh, I started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say I yeah, was, but years. Lou, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm, almost, I'm almost right there with you. Right. Uh, so here we are, and uh, tonight, uh, if you saw my Facebook post, you'll know that our guest is Dan Goonan, our fire chief here in Manchester. And there's some real issues uh, to, for him to, there's always <laughs> issues for Dan Goonan with the issue of keeping the city safe from all kinds of risks and hazards, not just fires, but also, you know, the role the fire department's now playing in addressing the opioid epidemic. And uh, so we got lots to lots to talk about with uh, Dan, and um, thank you for coming down and joining us. It's a busy, busy day, I know, for you. Uh, so uh, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How, uh, you're a Manchester guy. How long have you been, uh, you know, been in town, and how long have you been in the fire, fire department? Well, I'm a townie. I've been here my whole life. Um, my dad was a police officer in Manchester. Or he's a good friend of uh, Senator Del Sandro. I remember yeah. him well growing up. Um, I've been in the fire department for, uh, I'll be in my 35th year in wow. December. And you're so young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 55, big 5'5". Five five. I've got uh, three kids. I've got 7-year-old uh, twins, 31-year-old daughter, granddaughter. A lovely wife. I've been married uh, 13, almost 14 years. So, wow. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, so I'm, I'm here. I've been here for the long run. And oh, yeah. He's part of a great yeah. a great family. And he, he, <coughs> mom, he, 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 he <coughs> his dad was the best, <coughs> one of the truly great people in, in our city, I served as an alderman. He's got a couple of sisters who are beauty queens yeah. <laughs> and a mother who's out, just outstanding, yeah, a lovely, great. lovely woman, a wonderful, wonderful family in it. And I, I, I must say, uh, truly emblematic of, of uh, kind of like the American story and the American dream. Mm, I appreciate uh, and, uh, it. It, it. It is what it is, you know. And I think one of the problems with this life is we're, we're forgetting awfully fast about all the good things that uh, that we have and and have to hold on to. And uh, everything is being masked by the nonsense of the world today. Yes. And I find that to be yes. abhor abhorrent, to be honest with you. And, right. Uh, it's it's all these good things that set the stage for us to move forward, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and yet we're uh, we're ignoring them as we move on, and that's that to me is a very that's a very bad omen. So we got to get over yeah. it, and we got to get going, and <clears throat> and uh, dance uh, dance service is father service, uh, very very important to the mm -hmm. city of Manchester. Wouldn't find a better guy in this city than than Danny Goonan when he was a police officer and. Uh, Handle in the streets of, of, of Manchester. I can I can tell you that he supported me from the get go, and and mm -hmm. I mean the get go. Just just a wonderful wonderful yeah. guy. I, I remember I always I always say, tell you I remember putting up signs for you when you were uh, um, running for governor. Yes, yes. yes. I, don't, I don't remember what year that is, but I distinctly <laughs> well, remember he was going up. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I yeah. 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 I have a, to I have to bring that up right, every right, time. Right, right, sure. Right. That was <laughs> That was a long time, yeah, a long, long time ago. Well, I once, I once supported Republicans myself. I once supported <laughs> Nelson Rockefeller in the yeah. 1964 New Hampshire primary. And there's a picture at the uh, Institute of Politics at St. Anselm that I just discovered. <laughs> and there I am, you know, a college student getting ready to go to work for yeah. Rocky. Oh, well. You know, it's funny. I, every time I come down here, I think uh, down at the next door here at the Shiskeen, um, if you go in there, ever find yourself there having a beer, you look on one of the um, walls. There's a picture of my dad. And Mike Welsh and right. you know, no kidding. Uh, yeah, it's an Irish group they had back in the old days. Oh movie. yeah, well, yeah. outlawed rapperie. It was right. called. It's I, funny. Yeah, the, the rover, the rover became the rover. Yeah. when your father owned it. Yeah, it was a, Crazy. quite a thing. But here, so, here we are, uh, Danny, and a couple of things are uh, right, right on, on the forefront of uh, 
the scene, and that's the, the safe station mm-hmm. situation and what's going to happen under yep. this new proposal bring, being brought forth um, by the governor. And, uh, and the second thing mm-hmm. is uh, our fire department, it, mm-hmm. looks as, it looks as if a, a tentative mm-hmm. agreement has been brought yep. forward. And that's very, that's very important, yeah. very, very important. Uh, you know, at, a, at a time when we know how important public safety is, look at what happened mm-hmm. in Lowell, in Lawrence, mm-hmm. in Andover, North Andover. North yeah. Andover. I mean, the, the, the sort of the ultimate disaster. And, yeah. You know, many of those, those people uh, aren't back in their homes. Mm-hmm. No right. heat, uh, yeah. no, uh, no electricity, yeah. no hot water. And I know Manchester participated. Yeah, we were uh, down there. We, 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 we helped out. Yeah. A great tribute to mm-hmm. the Manchester Fire mm-hmm. Department and to the other fire mm-hmm. departments right. in, the, in the area. You know, the fact that they all turned out. I understand that they even came down from Kittery, Maine. Yeah, they were all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah it's, you know, what I always say, it, in, in Safe Station included, you know, we're, we're not, you're not your father's, grandfather's uh, fire department anymore. We do right. a lot more than people realize. Yes. You know, and yeah, I we, guess the mission of the fire department has <laughs> always been overall the same, but Certainly, the, the the agenda you have to meet and the risk you have to meet have changed a lot over your yeah. years, I imagine. Yeah, we're, we're, you know, when we say we're all hazards, we're all hazards, we're all crisis uh, organization now, and, and uh, you know, I welcome the, you know, the opportunities to be uh, even a bigger, um, you know, emergency management, that type of thing, you, you know, a bigger yeah. part in, um, you know, in every uh, response uh, in the city that we can possibly be, so. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's, it's really... Uh, an ominous task mm-hmm. today to be a public servant, uh, a police officer, and a fireman. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a tough business. Yeah. The risk taking yeah. is enormous. Uh, this this particular situation, which brought fire departments from the entire area, a t- very very dangerous mm-hmm. situation. Yeah. I mean, that gas was exploding. The pressure in those lines was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it never 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 should happen. Those houses were blowing up, yeah. right. and you had to go in. Firefighters had to go in and, and save mm-hmm. people's lives. It's a risky. It's a very risky business, uh, and uh, you know, kudos to mm-hmm. the action of the of, of the service and the cooperation that was manifested by by all of the parties. I mean, that's a real ex- a real example of, uh, yeah. of why why we need mm-hmm. uh, quality fire department. Why, why we need good equipment. Now we need good men and women well trained. Serving, well trained. It, it, it kind of you're right. It kind of shows you. You know, if anything happens, any kind of. Um, you know, crisis, uh, major incident. You know, we can, we can, they can tap us. We can yes. tap them. There's, right. there's a huge uh, mutual aid yeah. compact out there that that yeah, can just respond to really yeah. anything. It's not just restricted to New know. Hampshire, obviously. Yeah, it's we, most I mean, we can. Yeah. You know, we do Seabrook activities. Those, you know, we're, we're re- relocation uh-huh. centers. We have we have plans upon plans upon plans uh, for this community right. uh, in case of emergency that you know people don't even know about. Right. But we, but when 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 any of those emergency buttons are pushed, we're going to respond in kind, you know, so we're, you we're know, prepared. looking at that event down there in north, northern Mass and, uh, as you said, Lawrence, North Andover in that area, now we have a new proposal for a new pipeline from Manchester mm-hmm. called the Granite Bridge. And like all these things, I'm sure it's going to be controversial. But do you get involved in that about ensuring that the plans that they have, assuming this thing is going to go forward, Mm -hmm. and I think this is Liberty Utilities, they're going to have a big compressor station out in Epping and an old quarry, as I understand it, with a lot of gas to be sequestered there. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, Manchester, I think, to Stratum. And I think their proposal seems to make a lot of sense. If you look at the gas pipeline system we have in New Hampshire, that this could really, really help to, you know, cut down on the days when we are stressed out for our natural gas supply, you know, or supplying home heating, and then we may, may or may not have all the extra supply we need to run our generating plants that run on gas right. now. So is, is your department involved in the, uh, with Liberty on that at all or, or not? We... We're involved somewhat, um, you know. Liberty's the experts. Um, we're we're made aware of just about anything that happens, whether it's um, you know a pipeline coming through, new highways coming through. We're always in the planning stages for that. So, um, yeah, we are involved to uh, to some extent. But but you're right. I mean, gas is a plentiful thing, and I think we should tap into that if it's if it's available. Yeah, us. but we got to keep it safe. You know, exactly. and that's exactly. the question after what. Yeah, I don't know what happened down there, but <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, yeah. yeah. You know, I think that you know I was I was told that they're going to have to probably re- replace everything in the city, which is what, yes. something like forty thousand homes. So it's crazy. Yeah. And millions and millions of, of dollars. And think of the people that 
<coughs> are out of their homes right now and, and they need some kind of financial relief. I think the state of Massachusetts has come up with 10 or $11 million in an emergency fund. The governor came up with another another million out of a special fund that people could borrow against um, until their houses are back on back mm-hmm. online. So it's very, first of all, it, from a life-saving standpoint, we did okay. Mm-hmm. But from a danger and a damage standpoint, the numbers are, are really out of sight. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it was a very, very significant. Well, you know, I have to wonder. Do you have any idea, Dan, what happened there? I mean, as Lou said, I understand the pressures were way above what they should have been. Why wouldn't the carrier be aware of that? Why isn't there, you know, an ability <laughs> I, to know when their no pressure is too yeah. high in your line system? Yeah, it didn't. It didn't compute to me. I, I don't know how that could have happened. They say it can't happen here, but I don't know. Yeah, but I. You know, I <laughs> I'm kind of dumbfounded. I, I well, you know, when I when I saw the news happening, and I right. was at my, one of my kids' uh, uh, soccer games, and you know, I got I had a reporter call me saying, "Do you uh, do you have any comment on what's happening down in, uh, you know, Massachusetts?" And right. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. And then and well, then we started getting the calls, right. and you know, we we had we had some pieces in Manchester go directly to the scenes of fires down there. Really? So yeah. yeah. Mm. So mm. it's interesting. It's yeah. Yep. A cautionary tale yep. for sure. Yep. Uh, so let's go back to the safe stations yep. issue. When we really realized that we were going to get some major federal, additional federal funding to address this opioid crisis, mm-hmm. which we've been so hard hit by here, you know, one of the hardest hit places in the country right here in New Hampshire. Uh, and uh, and uh, at first it sounded like this might negatively impact the safe stations program. But I gather now that there's, a, there's protocols in place that, if, that this money is going to go, I mean, this new system of hub and spoke they're going to mm-hmm. have, as I understand it, is going to be not inconsistent with what you're doing at safe stations. Is that right? Well, not sure. I can tell you. I, uh, uh, I, I was notified today, I, I, did a, I did an interview on MUR, uh, and when the reporter asked me the questions, I said, well, I'm hearing it firsthand. I'm hearing it secondhand from a reporter. I'm not hearing it from, from the state. Uh, mm-hmm. Last thing the state told me was there was going to be nine hubs. There were going to be hospitals. Uh, CMC was going to be one of the hospitals. And um, basically, uh, what I was told um, at the time by Jeffrey Myers was mm-hmm. it, not just me. We had a we were sitting right. <clears throat> trying to figure out what what's going on here. And they said um, that you know essentially nothing was going to change in Manchester. That the hubs would be able to run the hubs uh, as they see appropriate for the uh, community. And um, we've done an awful lot of work here in Manchester um, for for years now. We've had 4,300 people come through. Amazing! Uh, Just an had, amazing. Number. We've had a record year, uh, record uh, month right now. With 214 last month, and yeah. we had a record before that of 194. So the need is great. Uh, we have a we have a system now, and you know what we really do in in Manchester, and it's it's kind of a it's kind of a simple front end, but a really complicated back end of this. You know what, what we just what we saw in 2015, very early in 2015, um, was that we had a we were we were dealing with a, a, an epidemic, a crisis, whatever you want to call it. Um, of substance abuse disorder, we were just going to, uh, you know, call after call, death after death, and uh, and it was, you know, it was something that was, you know, we didn't really, we weren't prepared to to deal with. What we found out was that was the uh, when synthetic uh, heroin came in or fentanyl, so we saw a lot of death and we saw a lot of overdoses. Right. So um, we kind of we kind of started to meet, tried to figure out what to do. We started to hand out information and. You know, we kept going to these calls. So basically, what happened was uh, we were kind of sick of going to round tables, and we wanted to do something. So, so we put this out. Um, you know, I, we had a per- basically what happened was we had a person come in who was addicted, who was suicidal, who just was at the very lowest point. And you know, we so they, we came in, we talked to them, we connected them with a uh, with a recovery center, and um, and said, Jesus, this is, this is something that just might work." I, Chris Hickey was the person right. who did it. Uh, he's my EMS officer. Yep. He, he sent me a, uh, a little note. I sent that to Mayor Gatsis at the time. I said, you know, Your Honor, this is something that I think might, you know, work. What do you, you know, this is good story. And he said, basically, let's get this done. So he was, he and was we were the first. That this was we the were, we were the first. first yep. In the entire United States. So we, you know, in a simple idea, we put it out, but it, it wasn't very simple. I mean, I had a lot to learn about addiction and, and exactly what sure. that is. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, we, you know, I, I thought, well, they come in, and, and you, to, to back up a little bit, what we're, you know, we're, we're not clinicians, but the more I talked to the clinicians, they were telling us that, hey, look, 
if we can capture that moment that somebody really needs it the most when they're yes. at the lowest low, whatever it is, you know, your your rock bottom. They got to be it is. pretty low to walk into a fire exactly. station and say, "I need help." Yeah, and you know, if we can capture that minute and open up all the firehouses uh, to anybody seeking, you know, uh, assistance with this, you know, terrible disease, uh, you know, I think we could we could do something. We could help the community and we could help people when they need it the most. So, so that was basically it, and we've captured that moment forty three hundred times. Right. Um, so, it's how long it's, has this program been running? May of sixteen. May of 16. So I've been, you know, at, the, at this point, it's, it's been such a, it's been a national um, model in yes. a lot of yes. ways. I've yeah. been, I've been all over the country talking about it. I've been down to the White House three times. I, I, I was in, uh, I was, I give, you know, talks uh, about Safe Station to the National Institute of Drug Abuse. This, you know, this, yeah. the, the, these people are, the clinicians, they're very interested in this. They think this model is fantastic. Right. I went to Cincinnati two weeks ago because really? they were, they were looking <coughs> at how to start this. We've shared this. Uh, pro a program with uh, they're in Providence, Rhode Island. We're in um, many states now, so it's like people are people. Are, you know, we've been doing this as the fire department for 150 years. You know, when you need help, you walk into your local fire station. <coughs> right. So we have, you know, we're we're uh, you know a uh, low threshold, uh, stigma-free zone where pe we pe treat people right. like people, and that's I think what is uh, the important thing we do. Um, what's built up around us, we have, <coughs> we've, in, in, if you, if you read, I'll, I'll send you the, uh, I don't know if I did send you, but I, uh, a National Institute of Drug Abuse did a study, and they realized, and they, what the, what the study showed was, um, we can get somebody in through this process into the most appropriate level of treatment, um, within two days, <coughs> where it used to take weeks and weeks. Right. So it's, it's that face-to-face -face kind of soft handoff. You come in, you ask for help, and you get help. I don't know why we'd go away from that model. Um, sometimes I think, you know, it's like this is, it's, you know, th this is above my pay grade or something that other people are going to make this decision uh, without consulting uh, <coughs> the, the people in the trenches. I mean, right. that's that's my fear. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to help, but you know, it's mm -hmm. I'm not asked to. Right. Which well, is that's strange. a legitimate. I mean, that's certainly a legitimate concern. <coughs> what we have we have done it. Uh, it's proven to be successful. It's a good model, and the idea was, if it works, why not replicate the model right. rather than recreate right. a, a situation that you don't you don't need you don't need to. Right. And, and, we, and through this process, I mean, we we've had you know Safe Station 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and believe me, I'm I'm a complete convert on on these right. on these folks that are su suffering. I mean, I I hear the stories. You know, when the mayor when uh, Mary uh, um, uh, George Craig came in. She jumped in with, with both feet, and she was you know, phenomenal yeah. with this. Yeah. Um, but but it's it's you know we, we need more you know we're looking for you know more beds on the back end. We're looking for you know more support there. You know our program. One of the great things about our program is it, it doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. Walking to your fire station, we're, we're handling this like a medical call. Mm -hmm. So um, you know sometimes you hear that you know we're. You know, I've, I've heard rumors, and like I said, this is what what I get in Manchester, just rumors on what the state's going to do. Um, but you know, there was a, there was some really strong rumors that you know somehow they're going to go away from this model, or or they were going to turn these hospitals into stigma-free zones. I mean, that's right. just not how it's that's not how how things work. Mm -hmm. You know, I think <clears throat> what what kind of scares me is that look, we we're in the trenches. We know what's going on. I know my people here. I, I talk to them every day. I've done hundreds of these these intakes, hundreds and hundreds of these intakes. Mm -hmm. I did one. I did one yesterday. Uh, poor guy comes in. I mean, it, the stories you hear, the the trauma in these people's backgrounds, uh, is just it's it's really sad. Uh, we had a guy come in yesterday who said, you know, he's he had six months to live. Six months. He's got mm -hmm. cancer, metastasized. He says, Chief, I'm coming in here because I don't want to die an alcoholic. You know. So it's like, yeah, you, you feel for these people. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um, but we've seen a lot of things, and and um, and I share it when I speak, um, and I know uh, the clinicians out there, the the people in national government think this is a great thing. I just hope we don't right. go away from that or go away from this model. It's it's, it's well, frustrating, but yeah. You know. Well, I, I think the the most interesting aspect of it is there's 22 million dollars coming in immediately, part of a 44 million dollar grant from the federal mm -hmm. from the federal government. So your initial comments were it doesn't cost anything, mm -hmm. all right? So now there's going to be $44 million to deal with this <coughs> situation. And if you have a model mm -hmm. and you can replicate that model, you can make 
real good use of, mm-hmm. of the money, mm-hmm. you know, without wasting in, in, any money. All of the money could go into direct service, and the second step, the treatment uh, of the individual, the long-term mm-hmm. care, yeah. uh, could come into play. You know, I, I think you're, I think the hub and spoke model it works in 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 places. I mean, but it's it's like this: the the hub is a treatment hub, you know, and. Uh, it's almost like it, the safe station in Manchester is is our own hub and spoke model, right. with safe station being the hub. Um, but if you take one of those parts away, you're just going to kill the program. So mm-hmm. if um, you know, I mean, safe station could be here, but I mean, what, I, I have no idea what this the hub is going to be. I mean, yeah. we go, we have a, a process where people are evaluated and people are screened and people are um, uh, assessed using ASAM criteria. You mm-hmm. know, just national guidelines that the clinicians use so we can find the most appropriate treatment and we found through this in the study will show you that six percent of the time we can get people from here to there I get I say they come into the firehouse I'm batting a hundred percent hundred percent of the time I can connect you hundred mm-hmm. percent um, we get to you Me know, get the get the follow-up yeah, services right and you know sometimes the uh, you know people will say hey what's your uh, you know, how can you, what's success? I'm like, well, you tell me what success is. You know, I, I know success is 100% of the time. I can, if you want it, we're on board. We can get you to treatment. Stabilize them, move them on Right, to and, and we, we were, we're, we think we can do other things with the safe station model, including medical assisted treatment. Sure. Um, we were writing grants for that, and uh, night is coming in, and they're, we're, we're now applying for hundreds of millions of dollars to, you know, it, replicate a system like we have here, yet we have another bag of money over here. And I think I've talked to you about the enormous amount of money. Right. It's it just I hope I hope we can we can find a process right. that we can effectively use this money, and not you know you know let politics cloud right. the the yeah. whole thing. You know, yeah. 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 so we'll we'll see. Right. And I'm, I'm learning and learning and learning more about politics. And and go, and I, I I call the center all the time because I just I, I don't understand what happens you know north of here. I mean, <laughs> I've got I've got my problems the in Manchester. It's like what the heck? There's yeah. probably a reason for that. Yeah. But yeah. So here's something that's kind of concerned me. I remember being here once. Maybe it was Chris Hickey was uh, was here with you. I don't remember. But learning that there was one particular individual who'd been brought back from the brink by Narcan nine times. It happens. Nine times. And I'm, I'm just thinking, I, I wonder if your guys, uh, and I guess there's some gals too, mm-hmm. if, if, uh, if, if they have a problem with compassion fatigue. If, I mean, how, mm-hmm. do you, how do you stay right. fresh and deal with these people yeah. and it's, treat them as real individuals in need when they, you know, they, they, maybe they've been there before and in and out? Is that, yeah. is that a problem? It, it, it is. And, and, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I, keep, I tell a story once in a while. Chief Burkish, my predecessor here, his, his uh, son's a fireman, and he, he calls me one day and he says, hey, he goes, my son just told me a story about a 17-year-old girl, you know, that they had to do CPR on and Narcan and, and addicted to, uh, you know, opiates and the whole bit. He goes, he talked about it like it was just another day at work. You know, back, you know, that, uh, you would think that that would be a, you know, kind of a life-changing moment, but we do, we see it all the time, we see a lot yeah. of death. Yeah. So, so how do you, how do you keep your people, uh, yeah, know, it's, be, well, I just, inf- I just, as humane as they should be, yeah, and, uh, right. as enthusiastic Our, our guys are, are really super when it comes to that. I, I you know, they, sometimes they're, uh, when you see them one-on-one and in, in, in talking to these folks mm-hmm. when they come in, they're really compassionate people. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they wouldn't be in this business unless they were compassionate. Right. Um, when you see them going to calls and, um, you know, dealing with people on the streets, same way. You know, I, there's many, many times where they say, hey, look, there's help for you. Just come mm-hmm. to the firehouse, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then every once in a while, you know, the, you see the guys that are like, ah, but, you know, for the most, these guys are compassionate folks, and they, and they wouldn't be in the fire mm-hmm. department, fire service unless they were, they so. Yeah. And, and we're, and I, and I just talked to Manchester Mental Health, we're doing some, we're doing some uh, classes uh, for our guys just to, you know, make sure that they know there's help out there for themselves, right. as well as trying to understand yeah, maybe why, some, maybe why people are coming in. Yeah, after yeah. seeing this trauma. I believe we have a call on line one, let's see if we do. Hello there. Jack, you with us? Yeah, I'm with us. 
<laughs> we you, lost Jack. We can we, we can call back if you want to, but it doesn't sound like maybe that it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, by the way, folks. He's like, the I'm, Chief's too long-winded. I, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot to mention, if you do yeah. want to call in, of course, the number, I think it's on your screen. It's not on our monitor here, but it's 640-3091, and we do, uh, we do welcome callers if you have something you want to participate in on our subject today which is the fire services here in Manchester and the many fine things they're doing for our community and this uh, landmark, uh, and, you know, first of the nation program of uh, helping uh, deal with the opioid addiction through the Safe Stations program where anybody can walk into any of our fire stations in Manchester, New Hampshire and just say, I need help and they will be, they will be evaluated, they will be given some help and they will be uh, assisted into re the recovery programs right. that we have, so it's been quite a remarkable program, and, yeah. and rightly, uh, rightly uh, celebrated as a, as the landmark that it is. Uh, got anything more you want to say about that, Chief? Because I got another subject I can take. You, you can ask <laughs> whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, the other thing that's kind of had your department in the news is the issue of the uh, contract dispute. And uh, I guess because of the fact that there's been no contract, there is a certain, uh, I guess it's kind of a work to rule situation with mm -hmm. some of your people yeah. now. And you've had to deal with some, uh, some uh, make some adjustments as the chief to yeah. deal with this. Can you, can you tell us about that and whether you see light at the end of the tunnel? I guess there's maybe a, maybe a chance that a contract is going to mm -hmm. be. Uh, sure. I think, well, it. the good news is, well, the good news is all, it's always been we've, we've been talking all the, all the time. You know, we've been talking, talking, talking. This is difficult. Um, you know what, ha what happened with this uh, happened a couple of years ago when the police got their contract. We were just about to. Right. sign a contract uh, and the um, automatic board at the time decided that uh, they were going to give the police a little bit more lucrative of a contract that we were even considering. In fact, uh, I remember sitting there at the negotiating table as we were just about to bring this forward to the board in the form of a TA. They said, well, we're going to wait because uh, we want to see what the police got. They, they're giving them some ridiculous terms and, and we're going to wait. And uh, so we waited that one day, and um, the police got what they wanted, and our negotiations went upside down, and they said, this is what we want. And I said, I don't blame you. Let's, I don't know what to tell you guys. I don't blame you. So we, we negotiated, and we tried to get there, and, um, you know, we went to mediation. We hired a mediator. We went through that process. Um, and, you know, what happened is another election came. We got five or six new players. They don't have ownership in this. You know, you talk to the board and they're saying, well, yeah, we probably didn't make the greatest uh, decision there. And, and now we're kind of referring to the police contract, re referring to the police contract like, Eesh, you know, yeah. we, we just don't have the money to support it. You know, yeah. a lot of them said we'd like to give everybody the same thing, but we just can't support yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and one thing led to another. We ended up, uh, um, you know, just throwing this thing down the road more and more and more and more and more negotiations. But the good thing is, as I think both sides realize, that we have to get to somewhere, right? Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm very happy that the, the city came a long way from where they started, and certainly the firefighters came a, way, a long way off of uh, the police contract, and we're very, very close on doing something. It's, uh, it's, it's been a struggle, and I... I've been negotiating this particular contract in one way or another um, since before I was chief, when really? I was the assistant chief. Are you, as chief, are you part of the bargaining unit? Yeah. Uh, no. No. Yeah. But you certainly have a real interest in it. Cause yeah, I'm on, I'm on, you know, it's, it's, I'm on the city side. Yeah. So, and yeah. I see both sides. I think that's, that's the, the, the thing. I, I understand that, you know, the city's, uh, the budget's set. Um, and we've kicked this can down the road a while uh, on both sides. So... It's like let's let's just let's move on to the business of being the fire department again. I'm just hopeful that we can get through this. I've been, you know, uh, so I'm for trying. how long have you had to make adjustments to the uh, the, the adjustments came very recently. Mm -hmm. um, I had to make adjustments in in you know I'm not sure how we got there, but we had a lot more sick leave. We had a lot more single shift vacations. That's over what the I was past, reading. Yes, over mm -hmm. the past three months. Um, so when you take a look at those things and you look at you know projections and trends. We were trending extremely high. Uh, my budget for overtime is 1.3. I was trending at 2.5 million. 
dollars. Oh. So when you look at that, and you and I'm and I'm thinking, geez, I'm I'm almost at fifty percent of what I should be at. Yeah. You know, I should be paying for the whole year. I'm going to make years, some adjustments. Years only, what, three months in or something. Yeah. So you know, in in ninety five percent of my budget is, is manpower, so I got nowhere else to go but overtime. So right. I looked, I said, uh, you know, we I've 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 gone through this this um, before. Uh, the last time I went through this, we were going to close engine nine. Um, but it was a different scenario because it was it was about um, you know mustering out pay and I had I had before the budget started I had a hundred and thirty eight thousand dollar hole that I had to fill right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So what I chose to do was was I'm like I, I got a plan to just shut down an engine company temporarily so I can make up those funds and then I can move on. What what this did to me was it. I, I was way beyond that. I'm 200 grand in a hole, and every week I'm losing, 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 losing. So I had to take some de a definitive action, and my action was, look, I'm going to cut out overtime as much as possible. So, you know, unfortunately, I'm playing a numbers game. So I wanted to put a piece somewhere. You know, 75% of my calls, 72% are, are medical calls. So I wanted to make sure I covered those, right? So I wanted to put a piece everywhere. And I started to reduce my manpower, um, and then take pieces that <clears throat> maybe uh, like engine seven and truck seven were at the same firehouse. I could take engine seven and move them to another station if I needed it to fill that one. So I'm at, l at least I'm left with a piece of apparatus in that. And th these aren't ideal things, but I was faced with a situation that um, I had to do some drastic things. So I, I'm hopeful I can. This is a month long. Um, um, this is a month-long reduction in manpower, uh, just so I can address these this massive hole I have in my budget. And after a week, um, I went from, you know, for instance, I spent seventy-two thousand in my overtime budget two weeks ago. This week, I spent seven. Mm -hmm. So if I can start making up, right, I'm going to sure. go back to my normal. You know, I'm I'm comfortable at forty-six. I really am. Um, we've made a lot of moves. Uh, we've cut a lot of people along the way. Uh, previous to this, you know, mm -hmm. you know, but we were, you know, the guys were at straight, straight time overtime, but they get more, you know, of it at straight time. So there's, there's a lot of give and take, and there's been a lot of give and take through this whole thing. These uh, these measures I took uh, really kept me up at night. That. Yeah, my, you can ask my wife. She's, <laughs> she's ready to kill me because my, my radio was always on in the background. I feel like it's like, oh, crap, I got to do this. If something happens in my area, I'm going, you know. Right. Yeah, sure. But it's just, it's... It's a terrible position to be in. I'm in a complete lose-lose situation. Mm -hmm. You know, if if God forbid something happens and there wasn't a piece in the firehouse, they're going to blame me. And if we have a fire, right. when right. I have the rescue at engine at at uh, you know engine five for the night, they're going to blame me. But I guess that's why um, I'm the chief, and I got to make those decisions. And, th and those decisions are, are are made with a lot of thought, and they're sure. difficult. And you know what? So when, um, when all is said, I, I said I can face the armchair quarterback because there is a lot of it. Right. When all is done, you're making these things because financial requirements do require it. The finances do require it. But there is some some small reduction in the measure of safety that the oh, I, I agree. can afford the city, right? Sure. Oh, I definitely agree with that. I mean, there's there's no doubt. I mean, running with uh, 37, 38, and and what happens is it it depends on my vacancies for the the day shift, day shift, night shift. I could go down to 38. The next today I was at 46. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends. You know, I get I get long term sick leaves that I have to deal with, uh, normal vacations. Right. So there's a lot of moving parts in my budget. Yep. So if, if this gets resolved, and it seemed like there's some odd reason for optimism that there may now be a contract that will need to approval, if this gets resolved, do you have the complement of uh, staff and, uh, and, and firefighters that you, you, you think the city needs if, if this gets resolved? Yeah, I do. I, I, we're, we're, I'm, I'm comfortable at this 46 now. Um, I don't, you know, in looking at the budget, um, I mean, I, it would be great if I could have another full-time ladder company open. That mm -hmm. would be great. But, you know, uh, the reality of the uh, financial burden the city's in and um, uh, operating uh, w in this uh, tax cap atmosphere right. with yeah. our with our Jagger Decker and everything else, it's just, it's, I don't think, something's got to, something's got to go, right. you know. Yeah. Something's yeah, sure. got to move, so. No, don't get me going on the tax yeah. cap. I think that was one of the most unwise things that voters yeah. ever did to this city, yeah. as if the aldermen were you know, throwing a money away at things, yeah. which I don't think is at all yeah. true. But, but Chief, now you have a, there's a contract mm -hmm. out there. Yes. And it's being examined by the rank and yep. file. 
um, and that contract, as I understand it, is a three-year deal. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And how much time does the the force have to evaluate the contract before they take their final vote and bring it back? I think what's happened, you know, my gut feeling is it, this is all about health care. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. It's all about the site of service plan that, that that's out. But, you know, I, I talk to a lot of fire chiefs out there in fire chief world and they are dealing with the same thing. Yes. Um, the, everywhere, they're all dealing about health care, health care, health care. So, it, you know, the city is not alone in this, and, and I can, you know, and I, and I, see, I see the numbers. <clears throat> I see what, you know, what um, the, the psychology of, of how they think some of these things are going to work and, and pushing people into lower-cost things. It's, it's, I'm, I'm really... Uh, I'm really getting educated. It's not like being, you know, you really yeah. got to, you got to really sure. look hard at these things and what's yeah. best for your family. Right. Um, I'm hopeful that um, Anthem can come in there and, and, and talk to people about maybe what's right for them individually. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot <coughs> of, uh, um, it's, it's really, I've been going, I've been, I've been going station to station trying to say, okay, ask me anything you want. I'm, I'm, I think I know what I'm, I'm talking about right. here. I've been sitting at these tables for a long time. So ha ask me about the health care. I'll give you my best. And, um, you know, it's not, you're not going to lose your doc. You're not going to do anything like that. It's just right. a, dif it's a different way of looking at it. You know, when I, when I talked to my, my brother, my brother Mike, um, who, who uh, you know, is working, you know, he works, he's a, he's a realtor, but his wife works for herself, and they have to buy insurance. And he goes, look, like, I'm dealing with a $12,000, you know, I, I get a, I got to pick up my own twelve thousand bucks. I look at this all the time. I look at the lower, yeah. Right. I look at these deductibles, and I and I go to the low right. lower price, you know. Right. So it's it's a different way to think, you know. I'm personally I'm on the HSA, and it was a different way for me to think, but once you're there, I can. Yeah. I can do well, it. there's no question that that insurance has become a, a key issue at, mm -hmm. at at the state level, uh, as well as at the city yep. level in personal personal insurance mm -hmm. and. Another ingredient is the retirees' health insurance, mm -hmm. that's which is issue. that's a huge issue at, at the state level, which we've had to deal with. And, and then, of course, there's the prescription benefit plan, Correct, right. which is another very significant aspect of this. But so from what, from what I understand, this is the state's plan, isn't it? Is, is this kind of the site of services? Yes, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And, and I, I think that, that at the state level, they're pretty satisfied mm -hmm. with, the, with the health plan, <clears throat> both the active employees and, and the retirees. Now this is a situation that <coughs> every 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 day every, every, every biennium there's a little yeah. shift. Yep. But but indeed, I think we have Cassie Kane who who does this work in the Department of Administrative Services, who who does a terrific job, and she's looking after the employees and and I think vigorously trying to solve solve problems. But we have an aging force. Um, this is on the retirement mm -hmm. side. Uh, and they have special needs, and those needs involve pharmaceuticals, and that's that's the really that's the really big issue. And on on our, on the younger side, you know, third party coverage when it came into play was a piece of cake. Everything was taken care of. Well, now everything being taken care of costs more and more and right. and more because of the the advancements in in medicine. But I think health insurance is a very significant issue, and the deductible is a very, mm -hmm. very significant issue. That, that high deductible has come into play mm -hmm. a, a, across yep. the board. You try to reduce cost, how do you do it? Right. You increase the deductible. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, and the other thing is you've got to have health insurance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to have it t t today. And, uh, you know, when we expanded um, Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. we expected cost to go down to some extent because uncompensated care was going to be mm -hmm. because was going to be reduced we were getting 52,000 more people on health insurance and as a result that would have in some way taken care of the increase and spread it out so that it, it was less well nothing's perfect mm -hmm. and we we've we've re-upped uh, our, our medicaid expansion right. for five and a right. half five and a half years right. at a cost yeah and that's one of the things that i think that's that's vo Medicaid expansion is, is to me, it's, it's it's vital to the population. Got to have it. This, the, the the safe station population, they are they are the poorest of the poor and the neediest right. of the needy. They have nothing. Right. So when they come to one of the, one of the great things is that, you know come to the firehouse and um, you tell them we're going to help you no matter what. Right. And our system um, helps people get 
do, you know, do the they do that casework. You yeah. know, so when you come from the firehouse to the Granite Pathways, they're doing casework. They're getting you reconnected right. with insurance if it's turned off or go through the application process. You know, there, there's a lot of other things that are happening there, and um, and I hope it, with this hub and spoke thing, if 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 we find a hub that we're going to send people to, if that's going to be the new yeah. process, if they don't do that work, this is going to fail. Yeah. Because these people, these people don't understand, and um, yeah. you know, and, and like I said, you know, sometimes it's I describe it as you know, there's, there's man children there that they if they don't. You have to yeah. to get these people better. They you got to really right. pick them yeah, up from really way working. below yeah. you'd ever imagine. So, yeah. well, but there's a lot of success stories yeah, out there. I'm so sure. there's ho there's sure. there's hope. There's, there's a That's lot good. of a lot of moving parts. A lot yeah. of things happening at the well, same and, time. And with the fully uh, understand them all. And, and with with. One of the things with the, the, the angst that my guys have with uh, their health insurance is that um, I, I think if we had some of the big hospitals down here involved with the site of service, like if Elliott or CMC, one of those hospitals would have stepped up and said, you know, we'll, we'll be one of those lower cost carriers, this site of servicing would have been a no-brainer. We wouldn't even be talking about this. We would have signed this contract a long time ago. Mm. Well, mm. It, it, uh, interesting. So here's something that my friend Elizabeth Ropp wanted me to bring up with you. You know, she was very. She's an acupuncturist here in the city. I think. Yes. I think you probably oh, yeah. know her because she's, <laughs> yeah. she's relentless when she gets yeah. behind an yeah. idea. And she got behind this idea, and I sponsored the bill to make available the possibility of having uh, first responders uh, and uh, the people they're serving uh, have available this ear acupuncture, this uh, in their ears. I forget the actual name for it, but oral. You know, it's a. It's a low risk thing, mm -hmm. uh, and she was very anxious. And now we've passed the bill. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, the regulations have been adopted. Is this uh, are any of your people using this? Or is, I, is I know she's a, my office uh, <laughs> demonstrating. Well, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go up against her business. She's a force in her own right. Uh, <coughs> I've but, connected her as much as I could with some of the people on the back end. Yeah. Uh, just for another option, you know, I think every every option we can give people for any relief would be great. Yeah. So if that could certainly be part of it, I know I uh, I'm, I'm on the drug court team also. Oh, are I've you? reached out to drug court um, to yeah. say that these things are available to people because a lot of times the people in drug court are are staying, you know, some time. There, uh, Elliott hospitals are a drug court partner, mm -hmm. so they have an office at Elliott. So you know, my, my thing was maybe she could come in there and, and do some acupuncture. Yeah. Uh, while people are waiting, so. You know, yeah. any you know any yeah, any option I think is great. Well, you know she operates out of what used to be the DMV down there on yeah. Hell Street, and what a different atmosphere in that place now. It's yeah. so calm and pleasant. <laughs> yeah. it's quite a delightful experience, even if you don't get long-lasting relief. But you know, is it just you ever been down there? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, they offer a sliding scale. You can get you can get you know a treatment for fifteen dollars, and if you want to pay more, you can up to a maximum of thirty-five. And well. It's it's really you know something I never thought yeah. I would try, but I've well, certainly enjoyed it. It's a, maybe it'd be part of our uh, SOS plan, so right. service. Yeah, no. right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, acupuncture, you know, yeah. is, is has really become uh, sort of in the vogue as we yeah. speak. Yeah, uh, it's uh, and I know that I'm not sure it was this woman, but comes up to the state house and um, has a has a day for oh she, it's for, her it's her right, so for the yeah. legislators yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you want to try this <laughs> oh she's formidable and, uh, she uh, is a yeah and i, I know that advocate for her oh, cause. Yeah, yeah i know that she's been uh, and she just thought that this was a tool that might help you yeah, know well, and, uh, deal with this not yeah. the answer by any means there's no one answer but everything that can help helps we should try and have help and, right. uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. exactly really it's like you know safe state just it's just part of the solution we need it you, right. you know all, well, this is an all hands on deck thing as far as right. i'm concerned yeah well, which is which is why i'm wondering you know we've been talking about the opioid crisis for so long now and, you know i i keep asking the guests that come in to t maybe i asked you the last time you were here are we seeing the crest of this wave are we are we are, where 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 are we gonna yeah. how I know you're yeah. measuring your own success with your program, and you've got some indicia that it's very successful. But you know, with the overall issue of uh, combating this terrible epidemic, is there? What are you, what are you seeing? And I don't what see do you it. Expect? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't see any end soon, certainly, and I don't think the uh, the experts in the field see it either. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, just showing by you know, just when you think you're seeing kind of a crest, or you know, maybe this thing is kind of plateauing, I get. 200 people a month start showing up. So well, I, you said I you had the most this month? The, the, most this month, your yeah. Safe station program? Yep. I don't get it. Wouldn't you think people would read the obituaries? 
We actually <coughs> had a few people in their obituaries, that, pretty amazing. It said that they, their, their loved one did die because of this. But then when you see <coughs> people with no cause of death and they're not, you know, yep. in their senior years, you, you have to think there's a good chance that this was the cause of death, even if it's yep. not in the open. Right. Uh, yeah, the people got to know that this is such a hazard to life. I don't, I don't get it. And, uh, there, you know, our, the, the rate of deaths are falling, certainly. Yeah. We're getting really good at CPR. We're getting really yes. good at administering Narcan. There's a lot of Narcan on the street. Uh, there's not a lot of Narcan being given out. Right. Um, so it's kind of a it's kind of a skewed success, but it's it's really a prevent harm model, I guess, and all mm -hmm. in, in the big picture. So people are getting another shot, and even with the safe station thing, it's like look, we're we're going to give you a shot. We're going to give you two shots. We're going to give you five shots if you need it. Uh, maybe that six shot will be the one. But you know, this is this is a you know when you this is a it's a really terrible relapsing disease. Um, and like I said, yeah. I'm a I'm a convert. I wasn't sure uh, what what I was seeing at first, you mm -hmm. know, but. But uh, you know, when you're when you're hooked on something like this, there's no there's no such thing as common sense. You're like you're just like a oh, yeah, just like right. a runaway uh, yeah. you know car without brakes. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, in one of these days, we've got to get to the fundamental cause. Right. Because we're treating it. What is the fundamental kind of, cause? And that's 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 the sixty-four dollar question. What, what is, is the fundamental? What cause? is the fundamental cause? Why? Why do people think? That it's not going to kill them. It, you know, wh how, wh I'm going to use this. It's going to make me feel better, and and I'm not going to be affected in a negative mm -hmm. fashion. They, they con themselves in, mm -hmm. into believing that, and I've heard this over and over again, Danny. That if you are hooked, you're hooked for the rest of your life. Yeah, okay. you're fighting it every mm -hmm. day, every day. Now I know that 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 uh, we we. Um, we allow for a synthetic opiate to be used to sustain people. Mm -hmm. we, we have methadone clinics. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have eight methadone clinics in New Hampshire. That means thousands of people mm -hmm. are using methadone on a, daily, on a mm -hmm. daily basis. Now, the the premise behind that is you're going to be on methadone for a period mm -hmm. of time, and you're going to wean yourself off, and, and you're going to have a better life, mm -hmm. and you're going to survive, and so forth. But I've had people come to my office and say that that's really not working. And because the methadone is the, just about as addictive as what you're well, it's it's a, it's a synthetic opioid. Yeah, yeah. So and, I, I hear that a lot in this business. And I worry about there, that. And and it's it's like there's 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 a there's a real stigma between people who are um, you know abstinent of, of all drugs yep. and we're you know it's it's you know cold yep. turkey and we're gonna go from there yep. and then there's this other there's this other um, you know a lot of the clinicians and the people that are you know at the National Institute of Drug Abuse and, right. and the people that are doing these studies and and quite frankly I see it in drug court because the people who are, are successful in making it through drug court and are you know are back in society and working and back with their families you know there are people that are a long-term treatment with you know suboxone right. vivitrol right. those types of things right and you know now you know suboxone is going to be a, a one-month injectable uh, there's a lot of stuff coming out in that you know in that scientific realm so you know then you then you look at say okay if 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 these if if this is a disease if this is a terrible relapsing disease why don't we treat it like a terrible relapsing disease and certainly if you know if you had diabetes you'd be treating diabetes your whole life so there's, right. a, there's a there's a school of thought now that says you know if you're addicted and if this is a disease and this is a disease, disease of the brain you may be on suboxone your whole life you know but I said, well, so is that the worst thing if you're back with your family? Is that the worst thing right. if you're back in society? You know, so that, that's those schools of thought that you're like, sure. you know, you got really got to think about this. And, well, and, it's and, and those are value judgments that somebody has, somebody has to make. And, and the met, you know, there'll, be a, there'll be medical research mm -hmm. that'll go on and yep. on and on and on. But we're using Suboxone in the prison now. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have prisoners on Suboxone. There are there are those who come to my office and who say, "Oh, it's it's killing my son. Mm -hmm. It's killing my son. Got to get him off. Yeah. Got to get him off." Right. And and yet, the son won't can't last right. w without it. Right. So there's, there are two sides yeah. to these stories. And, and, and so boxing can be abused too. So oh, so I think listen, what, the what, abuse of the product is yeah. really the issue at, right. at this point. And but it, it's it's I'll tell you, I've seen a lot of. It, it's just part of you know medical assisted treatment is just part of it. Just. There's a lot of psych stuff going on. I mean, these people are riddled with, 
with yeah. psychological issues too coming in. Um, that's why we're, mm. we reach out to Manchester Mental Health all the time. Yep. We deal with their uh, you know, response team. They're, they've been fantastic. Um, so it's it's. I tell you, it's a team effort in Manchester, and and uh, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. What the, what the ultimate solution is going to be? That's the sixty four thousand dollar question. Well, I think you're right, and, but we're just part of it. I think. And, and <clears throat> we, when we deinstitutionalize, I know we're getting a little off the mm -hmm. subject, brother Backus, but I want to okay. just mention when we deinstitutionalize and created the areas where where mental health treatment was going to take place in, in a better environment, we funded it properly. Mm -hmm. Over the years, for a while, the, yeah, <laughs> for a while, over the years, the funding has dissipated. Mm -hmm. Now, Manchester, Greater Manchester Mental Health does a great job. Um, I was up there three weeks ago to visit a, a young person who grew up in my neighborhood and who's, who's there, mm -hmm. who's fall, totally fallen apart, totally fallen apart, all right, receiving, receiving service. My, my, my point is we, we don't recognize mental health. Mm -hmm. we, we, don't, we, don't give it the, we don't give it the attention that it needs. Yeah, but it's mental, by our right. stacking people up in emergency right. rooms or like. But but mental mental yeah. health is a is a, a severe problem. And, and we that's why we work so closely with them because uh, yeah. if you if when when I talk to people that come in the safe station and you want and you ask them the questions and I like to ask these questions because I want to know who, who these people are that right. are coming into my fire station because I want to talk about it and and it and it is a mental health issue. So yes. when someone comes in and says, hey, uh, you know, I'm a I'm addicted to methamphetamines. But I'm treating my schizophrenia, right. you know, and you're like, okay, and it, it, there's just there's so much of that. Or you know, I had people coming in saying, you know, I I've uh, you know, chief, I was how long you been using? I've been using my whole life. I was born a drug addict. I was a I was a um, a baby that was born right. addicted, and, you know. And, and now though that that that's the saddest population is yeah. coming right, and that's a serious yeah. problem. Yep. You, you talk to the nurses at at CMC or the nurses at Elliott. These children that are, that are being born addicted, mm -hmm. and high, highly problematic situation. Mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, in the old days, we had three thousand people at New Hampshire Hospital. Three thousand. I remember. Yeah. yeah. So warehousing. Warehousing. So those those problems were just pushed to yeah. the side, and we thought that was the right thing to do. And it was, but we yeah. didn't keep up the effort. Yeah. And, and, and you know, my it, uh, like, help my. Us. One of the one of the things I have go, kind of going for me, especially with the medical assisted stuff, and, and really what's what's cutting edge is my wife is is a nurse practitioner, and she deals with a lot of this pain, yeah, pain and, and addiction medicine, and and, she, they, and they're a great resource too. Yeah. So I'm always texting her. I'm like, what in the world is right, this? Right. She's this at going? CMC. She's uh, with, uh, <coughs> with with New Era with Medicine, Doctor okay, Right. Yeah. Because um, <coughs> my wife was taken by ambulance. Yes. Yes. To to the to CMC yep. and and she did come and administer took yes. care of her yes yeah, she yeah yeah, yeah that was a, yes that, that I was remember a, that, that yeah. was a tough night in the yeah. Delosandro house I, yeah. I can tell you and uh, my, my wife had fallen and hurt her back and she just couldn't move she couldn't move we had to have the ambulance come and this was and you say seventy five percent of your calls are medical. Yeah, I'd say that's 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 pretty that's fair. That's pretty amazing. Seven to seventy-five. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? Amazing. You think it's the fire department, but it's really the medical assistance. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we we do a lot of uh, yeah. Like I said, it's not your father's or grandfather's uh, fire department. No, it, anymore, it, but, it uh, isn't. But you know, in a city like this, we just still have a. a a, f a fair amount of fires, which yes. is yeah, we got a lot of old housing. An, yeah, it's an old yeah. housing, and, and we're dealing with a lot of stuff. So, you know, we're dealing with the, uh, you know, uh, sober living, yes. and those oh. types of things. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. always in. in a, oh, you you know, are, I'm always in a the, the I hope, brain. <laughs> <coughs> I hope that thing uh, yep, we settles some, down. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a, I, uh, I um, had a little crash course on how to, uh, you know, put legislation through, right, and right. and uh, <laughs> well, you know, and. Man, I don't know. Uh, well, it it uh, it, it, can <laughs> it can become very involved, I, I, and but we got it in. Yep, and you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to do it through the proper process. You finally get it done, and uh, it, you get uh, but but backfires. Let's oh, call yeah. it back, uh, backlash. Oh, backlash, uh, backlash is right. Backlash. Yeah, but, but uh, I, I think we we'll, we did the right thing, yeah. and we're, mo we're moving in the we're moving in the right direction. Danny, before we we end this. The, the parade. the parade. Is there any chance oh, yeah. the parade is going to I'd love to bring the parade back. I mean, oh. I, they, I just had, I just need volunteers, and that yeah. was part of the, yeah. you know, that that was just why I just knew I couldn't depend on that. It, this, this, it was an awful lot of turmoil. Yeah. Uh, it was a terrible. I, I, was, I didn't want to make that decision, but I, I'm like I, I want to give, uh, you know, 
I want people, you know, people, kind of, that, that that parade was kind of, is really important to the fire service. I oh, really yeah. liked that parade. Because uh-huh. a lot of people come from all over the place. Oh, yeah, and, and, it's a great parade. And the kids loved it. And But I, I needed, I needed, vol- I needed to depend on volunteers, and I need to plan this. So right. the problem is, I, you know, go through the planning process, and, uh, you know, I, you know, Chief Kim, Chief Goonan can't do it alone. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a that's a lot of pizza and a lot of <laughs> bacon and eggs to cook. I, I, well, we uh, so we, it was it was unfortunate, and um, you know, yeah. hopefully it'll be bigger and better. But I'd I'd love yeah. to. Well, we hope so. Can't, we, can't we, be can't be this year now. It's no, totally it's, it's that that yeah. ship has sailed. I think that ship has so. sailed. Well, we love our firefighters, and we yeah. have great respect for our firefighters, and I've I've sponsored some legislation vis-a-vis firefighters, uh, and, and hopefully we can. We can yeah. keep going in the, in the right direction. Let's hope that this thing gets settled. We're yeah. back on track. And, uh, yeah, these things become uh, yeah. Yeah. stressful, passionate yes. people wear and, uh, on, on both sides. sides and, yeah. but and, uh, you, you gotta, I hope cooler heads prevail within right. the next couple of weeks and right. I can get back to the business right. of being. What, is, what right. are some of your plans for the fire department going forward? Uh, well, one so of my we get the contract. Yeah, I, regardless, I mean, like my father said, this too shall pass. So, right. um, once we get through this, we get over this hump. <clears throat> we're going to start, you know, doing what I really wanted to do when I got into this position. I want to get, you know, we we do seventy five percent medical. I want to, I want, uh, you know, ALS engine companies. I want more advanced, um, skilled uh, people in, in that realm. I want people that are um, advanced level providers. I want. Um, I want to get into the medical business right. a little bit, not necessarily with with uh, um, ambulances, but I'd like to be, you know, responding in that way. I want to help have our guys provide some more care. Right. Maybe I can do this, you know, I'd like to do like maybe a public-private partnership where maybe we have BLS uh, um, um, ambulances, basic life support, where a fire truck comes in and they can provide the advanced level stuff and maybe we can start, you know, charging for those types of things. So I'm trying to get my foot in the door, start to learn how to learn how to bill and uh, and who knows what we can what we can see ourselves going. Well, but yeah, always we got a lot, lot of plans. Yeah, a lot of plans. Hey, I got seven year old twins, so I'm only gonna be here for another <laughs> twenty five years, you know. Well I, I, I don't know if I got twenty five left, but I can tell you the reason why I'm here is because firefighters saved my life yep. when I was a kid, took me out of a burning home. And, and save my life and the lives of my family. So I got a lot to be thankful mm-hmm. for, and uh, appreciate that until the day I die. I'll tell you that. Yeah, and I want to thank you for coming. Oh, in. no problem. Yeah, anytime. Anytime. Really, anytime. Really great, great to have you. I yeah. think we're just about at the end here. Did you want to say something about Sanunu Center? We got time to have you talk about just, that. Just a, a quick. We had the uh, we had the meeting on the Sanunu Center, and there's great concern as to what's going to happen to the Sanunu Center. Who's going to be there? How the place is going to be d- divided? and what kind of services will be delivered there. Uh, there's a commission that's, uh, that's ongoing as, as we speak. The governor and council approved uh, a contract today to use 36 beds for, for, uh, for um, adolescents' mental health at, at the Sununu Center. And it's that section mm-hmm. that's, that's cut off, so it's, uh, it's segregated from most. But that's a, that's, a step, that's a step forward in dealing with, uh, with mental health, yeah. and uh, hopefully uh, we're moving, again, moving in the right direction. But this commission will have a report. It will be due by the end of the month. It will go to the, to the legislature to see what, what they think about yeah. what's going to happen. But, but you know, there's... Um, there's always been a bone of contention about sending youngsters to that kind of an environment. Yeah. Now, I served as a trustee of the old, when it was the Youth Development Center, yeah. uh, those many, many years ago. Before and that, it was the industrial the school. Industri- the industrial school. And go back uh, a long way. So, the reform uh, school. That's yeah, where right, I was going right. to go. It was yeah. the reform <laughs> school. <right. laughs> it was bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah I used to threaten your kids with that. Right. Yeah. It's going through a process, and uh, we'll see what happens. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, folks. Uh, again, thank, thank the you, chief Dan. for coming in and joining us. Thank Lou right. for helping out. Thank I'll be you. back right. next Wednesday with Mike Farley, and we'll have another edition of the Progress Report. Watch my Facebook page to see what's going to be on as soon as we've scheduled it, <laughs> which I don't think we have yet. But the week after that, we'll be here with Colin Van Ostern, so that'll be an interesting thing. Okay, Good take night. care, folks. Good.